33. He that overcometh. May the 18th, 1954. Good morning, friends. There are times when many of us wish we could play God for a little while and make a few changes in the nature of things around us. We would certainly eliminate some of those very trying problems which dog our steps, and we would reach out a helping hand to friends whose grief or need leaves us distressed and normally helpless. We'd make quite a few changes towards making our lives richer and happier, and this world a safer and healthier place to live in. Our way of making these improvements would be to eliminate problems. That, inevitably, is a solution we gravitate to and think of constantly. As far as we are concerned, life's freedom, meaning and richness would begin as soon as those problems could be eliminated. An obvious question then raises itself. If life can be so greatly improved by the elimination of these problems, then why doesn't God eliminate them? After all, he does have the capacity and power to do so. By his sovereign will and word, God can do anything. Then why does he permit us year after year to flounder about in the sickening and searing jungle of human life today? Why doesn't he eliminate these problems and conditions to begin with? We like to dream of such a solution, and we show our weakness in this. We fail to recognize or admit that the problems we want to avoid are often more necessary to us than the peace we crave. We refuse to recognize that problems and troubles are as much God's instruments as anything else. Just as a child would like to receive all his nourishment in the form of candy, cake and ice cream, so we want God to give us all the blessings of life without any of its problems. An intelligent parent makes certain that his child gets a healthy diet, and the God of love makes sure that we get a healthy diet of problems to develop on. It is a great and foolish mistake for us to demand peace and victory before the battle is begun. We cannot avoid the battle without at the same time avoiding the peace and victory that follows it. Problems and troubles are a hard necessity without which life would become impossible, peace unattainable, and man without character. Our Lord promised us peace and victory, but first of all he declared that his work would be a divisive one. It would result in painful division, trouble between members of a family and between friends, and would separate men. I am come, Jesus said, not to bring peace on the earth, but the sword. See Matthew 10, 34. In short, he asserted that the way to peace and victory lay through trouble and defeat. He warned his disciples against the peace too hastily claimed. He promised them only an inner peace, not a trouble-free or peaceable location in life. And this inner peace, he declared, would sustain them in all things, not by eliminating problems, but by overcoming them do we gain peace and victory. Therefore, God does not eliminate all our problems, but very often adds to them in order that he might truly bless us. Jesus declared, John 12, 24, that a grain of wheat must fall into the ground and die in order to bring forth fruit. In the same way, you and I have to die to ourselves in order to live in him. All the problems of life are an assault on our ego, on the old Adam in us trying steadily to drive us out of ourselves, our constant source of trouble into the hand of God, our only source of peace and strength. Jesus said, To him that overcometh I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I am set down with my Father in his throne. Revelation 3.21 Our Lord gained his peace and victory by overcoming And we ourselves need to realize that peace is the portion only of those who overcome in Christ. We are told that he that overcometh shall inherit all things. Revelation 21.7 This is a call to struggle with the assurance of his power in the battle and his peace at the end. More than that, this declaration contains an important promise concerning our inheritance. The Swiss poet C.F. Ramuz has declared, Man never has what he wants because what he wants is everything. 
It was, is, only in God that he could, can, have everything. The promise definitely carries the clear-cut statement that everything is due to the man who overcomes in the Lord. The time shall come in eternity when the redeemed man shall inherit all things. Meanwhile, we walk in this confidence that our problems are God-given and will be used to our ultimate peace. As Cowper's hymn declares, Ye fearful saints, fresh courage take, the clouds ye so much dread, are big with mercy and shall break in blessings on your head. William Cowper, God Moves in a Mysterious Way, 1773